for my frame rate. So not sure how this video is going to look. Okay. Anyway, we'll go with what we have. So once you get that uh, stuck on there pretty good, we're going to want to take a hammer that's got some weight to it. Um, and something, usually a dead blow hammer or something. This has a plastic plastic on it and we're going to strike it in the bottom, which sounds kind of counterintuitive, but man, nothing drives more force onto a handle than doing it that way. You can see I've got to put a little chamfer on there. This is true with any axe head or hatchet you do. And the, the trick is, is to kind of hold it loosely in the hand. What you, what you want is when you, when you impact the handle, you want it to kind of slip through your hands a little bit and the mass of the head is, will hold it there and it will drive it. And listen, use your senses, listen, you can hear it. It will drive it down so hard onto that handle, you won't believe it. So this turned out really good. That, look how far we got that handle um, driven down on there and look how tight everything is around there. That's what we're looking for. We don't want to voids. You know, when you're working with these cast or forge tools, there are going to be inconsistencies and, and you'll, they'll never be perfect. But that is really sitting hard on that shoulder right there. And you can see the, how tight it is. The same way around the top, you see that we're, we've got everything filled up. And even that kerf that we put in there, we're going to be hard pressed to get much of a wedge in there just because it's so, so tight. Um, and this is a handle that's going to be, it's just not going to come loose. It's going to, it's seasoned wood that's been in a warm shop for many years as a super low moisture content. And, um, if we wedge this properly, we're going to be, we're going to be in good shape. Look at that. Now you can buy wedges or you can make your own. You can use a, a lot of guys use pine. I typically use whatever I have. It doesn't seem to make that much difference as long as it's dry. Um, when you buy, you, you know, when you buy your little wedge deal, sometimes they'll come with one. So if you, you get one that's the wrong shape, it's not a big deal. I like to, to really, you know, press it. I want it to, to squeeze. I want it to be a little bit wider than the hole there. So what you can do is, is you can trim them. So just, you know, make kind of a note there and wedges should be made out of really straight grained wood. So they should split cleanly. And there now we're got that in there. This is so very tight that it, we might have trouble getting it started. So that's the case. We can even open this up a bit with our saw. I mean, it, it's, it's the fit I've got so tight. It's almost as if it didn't, I, I can't even feel the curve. So hopefully we can get this in there. So here's something I've been using. It's called swell lock and what it's supposed to do is it's, is it's supposed to go into the wood and swell the wood, uh, but not leave it. It won't evaporate. Uh, it, look how it drinks that in there. That is really something. And so what it does is it goes in there and then it hardens and dries. Um, and it swells is it intravascular or extracellular. What is it? I can't remember it from my medic days, uh, swells the cells. Uh, and then it doesn't leave there. That's the problem with water. Water will go in and swell the cells in the wood and it will tighten up ahead temporarily. But once the water leaves and it evaporates, then it will, um, you're essentially worse off than when you started. Here's a good perspective. You can see now, see, I've got that, that's sticking out of there about half inch or so. Look at the, at the flare. Look at how much that's mushroomed out of there, out of there. That's going to be nice and tight. That's going to hold a long time. That swell lock also seems to uh, keep the, uh, keep the wedge and everything intact. Then I'll, uh, I'll come back here. Some people like to cut them flush. I don't cut them flush. I, I like to leave an eighth of an inch or so. I think, Aesthetically, it looks nice, and I think it makes for a stronger, a stronger bond, and, and it just gives a little bit more. Let's you know, leaving that flare out of there is going to be uh, is going to help it out. Then after your trim, put your your swell lock in there, and let that uh, drink down in there. Keep adding until it just won't take anymore. And you know, there's only one thing left to do. 
Of course, we got to treat the wood, treat the handle, of course, and we're going to use our, boy, I got all my toys out here. We're going to use our boiled linseed oil. Just can't go wrong with that. Wear some gloves. Keep Sally happy. Oh man, I just boiled, boiled linseeded my floor. Boiled linseed oil, of course, is, uh, is what you want to apply to all your tool handles. And the old, the old timers used to say, uh, you do it once a day for a week, once a week for a month, once a month for a year, and after that, once a year annually. So in the fall, or in the fall is kind of our routine is to, is to take all of the tool handles and scrape off the mud and the sap and the pitch and then give them a good coat. Um, wipe it off, don't let it dry on there. Uh, but just keep applying it. So on the fresh wood, uh, just put one coat on there, warm it. The warmth of your hands will help kind of rub it in. Don't neglect the ends. Um, and I just go ahead and just rub a, rub it on the metal too. It, it, is, it does de definitely help preserve or pr protect it from, from rust. And once you have applied it, then just wipe it down, wipe it off. We'll finish up by taking a Quick look at our work here. I'd have to say that it turned out very nice. It, it indeed, it, it truly is. It's an oval handle. Is it perfect? No, this was, look right there, you can see, I got too deep right there. This was the first time I ever made, tried to do offset turning, I guess you call it, with a with a lathe. So I, I just took my knife there, and of course, of course you want to cut a little chamfer on the corners there. So if you come down, you hit something, it won't split your, your handle. But it is, um, it does, it is a nice handle. It fits the ha it fits the hammer well. Um, the fit is excellent. I have no uh, no issues there. Nothing like hickory. I mean, as soon as you grab it, it's these are really delightful. These little hammers to use because having that really small that three quarter to half inch bit of um, a taper in them, uh, it gives a lot of um, snap to the hammer. Uh, it, it, it whips, it actually, you can, it, it bends and springs back. And that's what makes hickory such a wonderful tool handle wood is that it has that spring, that liveliness, uh, as it's described by the old timers back in the day. They, you know, a lot of wood there is tough enough, oak, for example, or different maples, they're tough enough for handles, but they're dead. They don't have that spring, that liveliness uh, that you get from uh, a hickory handle. And the thinner it is, uh, the more pronounced that is, the nicer, more pleasant it feels. It almost feels like it's assisting you. Um, and, but this is a small hammer for detail work, so we don't need a ton of strength. You can see Granddad had his hammers, and they had that very slight, really small, look right here, really small form. Mine's even smaller. Mine maybe a little bit too small, uh, but uh, still good. Next one will be better. So that was uh, fun to do, and... We learned a lot. So I'm looking forward to the comments for you guys that are pro turners can tell me how we can figure out how to be a little bit more consistent and know when to stop on that taper. Um, but indeed it is, it is nice. That's one problem I don't like with the lays is having the, you got the holes in the bottom. I guess you could cut that off. Guy probably ought to make his hand a little bit longer, extra half inch or so that, so you can cut that off with the saw and, and get rid of those because they, they don't look very nice. Yeah, there you go. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to click the thumbs up. Thumbs up. See you on the next one.